Hello again, everyone. Uh, this video is meant to introduce you to section 4.4, a lot of which has to do with the rational root theorem. Uh, so we'll talk more about this on Monday, but I want you guys just to get a head start. The rational root theorem says that the fraction p over q is, is a root of a polynomial f of x if p is a factor of the constant term. What I mean by that is the term that's a number, the last term and q is a factor of the leading coefficient, the front term with the highest power. So to give you guys an example, your homework problems will look like this. Uh, list all possible roots of 3x to fifth minus 2x cubed plus x squared minus x plus 4. So in this, the first step you're going to do, uh, first let's identify the p and the q. So here, p is going to be a factor of the constant term, the last number. So p could be the factor of this. And we're going to list out all the possibilities. And then q is a factor of the leading coefficient. Well, the leading coefficient is here. So q is going to be a factor of this. And the word factor just means, does it go in evenly? So can you divide by that number and have it go in without a remainder? So let's list out the possibilities for p. So what are all the numbers that go into 4? Well, we know that 1 goes into 4. We also know that 2 goes into 4. And we also know that 4 goes into 4. Those are the only factors of p. Now, one thing you need to be careful of in this case is that p can be positive or negative. You can divide 4 by a negative 1. So I'm going to put plus or minus 1 here. You can divide 4 by negative 2. So I'm going to put plus or minus here. And you can divide 4 by negative 4. So this is also plus or minus 4. So those are all the possibilities for p. Well, now let's list all the possibilities for q. The only numbers that go into 3 evenly are 1 and 3. But negative 1 also goes in. Negative 3 also goes in. So that's why I'm writing plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. So now let's list all the possible roots. Well, the possible roots are all the combinations of p divided by q. I should have written possible first. This doesn't tell me that all of them are roots. It's just that um, instead of guessing randomly, now we have a narrow, a smaller list of uh, possible roots than all of the numbers that exist. So if I think about this logically, I'm going to take p over q. Well, 1 over 1, so I could get plus or minus 1. 2 over 1, so I could have plus or minus 2. 4 over 1, so I could have plus or minus 4. I could have 2 over 1. I'm sorry, I already did the all over 1. So then we've done all over 1. Now we're going to do everything over the 3. So we could have plus or minus 1 over 3. So that's plus or minus 1 third. I could have plus or minus 2 over 3. So plus or minus 2 thirds. And then I could have a plus or minus 4 over 3. Now, it just so happened in this problem that none of my possibilities repeated. But if that happens in your homework, just don't write the repeat. So, for example, if I ended up getting, um, let's see, something would reduce to this. So, see how I have two-thirds here? If I, for some reason, got four-sixths, so just bear with me. If you got plus or minus four-sixths, well, that is the same thing as plus or minus two-thirds. So there's no need to write plus or minus four-sixths right after this. So don't write any repeats. Uh, and so these are all the possible roots. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve possibilities. But we know that only five of them might be roots. Uh, so that's really it. Uh, if you guys would like another example, uh, I will do that if you've got it. 
then obviously you don't need to tune in for that. All right, so another example uh, of listing all the possible routes. This one's going to be a little bit more drawn out. Uh, same directions. 3x cubed minus 13x squared. And actually, since we had the first one that was 3, let's do a different, different number here. Two x cubed minus thirteen x squared plus two x plus eight. And we want to find all of the possible roots. Now again, we want to identify our p and our q. Now it, it might be confusing to you why, which one's p and which one's q. Normally, you think p comes before q, but it's kind of backwards. So the last number is going to be the p. The first number is going to be the Q. And so possibilities for P is everything that goes in 8. 1 goes in, 2 goes in, 4 goes in, 8 goes in. Now, we could have the negatives as well, so don't forget all the plus or minus. And then for Q, only 1 and 2 go in. But again, I want a plus or minus because negative 1 goes in, negative 2 goes in. So now to list out all the possible roots, we just have to put all the P's over all the Q's. So with eight different numbers, sorry, I kind of got ahead of myself. If four numbers here and two numbers here, that makes eight combinations. With all the plus and minuses, that's really 16 combinations. So everything over 1, so we're just going to write these numbers again, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8. And again, those come from 1 over 1, 2 over 1, 4 over 1, 8 over 1. And then we get from here the 2. So we're going to get plus or minus 1 divided by 2. Then we're going to get plus or minus 2 over 2. Well, 2 over 2 is 1. So I don't need to write that because we already have that in our list. Then we get plus or minus 4 over 2, but that's 2. And again, already in the list, so we don't need to write it. Plus or minus 8 over 2. Again, that's 4, and it's already in our list. So actually, this list is complete. Those are all of the possible roots. And that's it for the introduction for Lesson 4.4, uh, Section 4.4. Uh, we'll do with more with this on Monday, but this is just to get you guys started on your homework.